Hello, in today's video I will show you how to create an adaptive bolt set connection in Autodesk Revit. Let's get started. We will begin by creating a new metric generic model family and adding two connectors to it. Then assign the nominal diameter for the connectors. Then we will switch to another metric generic model that will serve as a base for the bolt family we created before. Position the bolt family at a specific distance from the center line of the new family. Assign properties such as bolt length and bolt diameter to the bolt family. To handle multiple bolts inside, create a circular array Assign a value to the distance between the bolts from the center and add a property label to define the number of bolts in set. This number will depend on the diameter and pressure ratio of the flange. Once the step is complete, load the bolt family back into the new family and insert it in the center. Rotate the inserted family by 45 degrees and assign it a property label. Assign additional properties to the bolt connection, including the length of the bolt, the diameter of the bolt, and of course the quantity of the bolts. All properties should be set as the instance parameters. And that's it for the bolt set geometry. Now let's create the lookup table. The lookup table will include parameters such as nominal diameter, nominal pressure, outside diameter, thickness, properties related to the bolt geometry such as positioning from the center of the flange, length of the bolt, diameter of the bolt. And of course, flange thickness and facing thickness. Once the table is ready, load it into the family and replace the default lookup table in the template. Replace the formulas in the family template with updated search criteria. Use nominal diameter and pressure as the key criteria for both connectors, end 1 and end 2. If any errors arise during this process, Fix them before proceeding. Now add more properties to the family, such as face and thickness and bolt length. You can also add a custom defined length for the bolt set, which allows for deviations from the calculated values. This is useful for cases like buffer type valves, such as check valve or butterfly valve. Include properties like flange thickness to ensure proper positioning of the bolt head. Assign lookup values for parameters such as outside diameters of end 1 and end 2. If your lookup table uses commas as delimiters, ensure they are updated to avoid issues when loading the table. Once updated, reload the table and remove unnecessary properties such as thickness. Bolt set quantity, object type and specification spec. Next we need to update the reference plane for the bolt set. Go to the bolt set family and adjust from the front view the reference kind and indicate it as a weak reference. Then load it back, go to the front view and link it with just created the reference plane. Then
assign a distance for the reference plane labeled T and use the formula to define this value using flange thickness and facing thickness. Set the family's category to pipe accessories and modify the part type to break into. Now Load the family back into the project to test it. Follow these steps to test the family. Insert the bolt set into a flange. Add the gasket to the flange. This sequence is important because the bolt length calculation includes the gasket thickness but excludes it in the positioning formula that we defined before with T. Add the blind flange to complete the test. And now, as you see, it works fine. Now, to finalize this exercise, we will do the final check using butterfly valve and for this check insert the bolt set on the flange connection add the gasket include the butterfly valve in the connection and add another gasket and the blind flange now go to the properties of the bolt set connection and define the custom bolt length property to match the connection thickness including butterfly valve and as you can see everything works perfectly that's how you can create an adaptive bolt set connection in Autodesk Revit. If you found this tutorial helpful, please like, comment and subscribe for more Revit tips and tricks. Thank you for watching and see you next time!